So this is one of my regular clients. The last time she saw me was about three months ago. So today we will just be touching up where we left off. I will start by sectioning her hair. I like to section off the two front sections in front of her ears. And then I keep the back as one whole section because I like to do it across the back so it lifts evenly. She just wanted to do a partial today, which is why we are not doing the bottom section. I start by weaving the section like a normal highlight, and then I tease about three times and stick the comb in the top. I do use a board for almost all of my highlighting techniques, which helps hold the tension against the comb. I paint all of these in a V shape, and I will use my brush at the top to blend up into the teased area. I then move the previously highlighted hair to the side, fold up my foils, and repeat this on the opposite side. As you can see, she does have a little bit of a band where her hair is grown out, so this teasing technique also helps to diffuse that band. For this client, I am choosing to do a bricklay technique, which also helps if you have someone that has a wider section in the back, so you're not trying to squeeze everything into two foils. My choice of product today is Redken's Flash Lift and 20 Volume. She does prefer to keep a little bit of warmth in her hair, so we're not wanting to lift too high. As you see here, I'm continuing the weaving technique and I will tease it about three to four times. Apply my board, stick the comb in the top, and then apply most of my lightener with the comb in the top, which keeps the teasing from getting all messy. I then remove the comb and the board and continue to add lightener until I'm happy with the result. On this one, I did decide to do a piggyback foil at the bottom because the lightener needed to go down a little further on this highlight. This will allow for even distribution of the lightener resulting in an even lift. As you can see here, I'm taking a V section which will allow room for the two foils to continue my bricklay pattern. And I let the small section down in the middle to continue the pattern. Don't forget, hair is an art. So this is just the technique that I've come up with myself that I prefer. And it allows for plenty of the natural hair to be left in between to create that depth and dimension. Once we get to the top, I like to do two foils in the middle, so it gives that very pretty diffused effect once her hair is down. Since I do a lot of clients with long hair, it does take me a while to do this process, so I like to use a lower volume developer in the back and switch to a higher volume for the front to create even lift. So I am now using Flash Lift with 30 volume for the front sections. She likes a lot of blonde around her face, so I am taking a couple back-to-back -back foils here all the way to the scalp, not teasing these sections. For all of the foils around her face, I like to use a diagonal back technique. I did three foils on that side, and now I'm switching to the opposite side. Something I struggled with when I first began doing hair was having too much lift on one side while waiting for the other side to process. So I like to flip back and forth to create an even lift. And again, I did two foils all the way to the scalp and then the third one I am teasing. 
and on these i do not do a v section i do a slanted section so towards the front of her hairline it is going to be higher and slightly graduate downward toward the back I always take my client's part into consideration when doing this technique. She does part down the middle. I am doing a very small mohawk section in the very front to create that beautiful money piece. The first two foils I will weave and get as close to her scalp as possible. I weave out just a very small amount of hair between these foils to leave the dimension. And on the third one, I like to tease it. So total for that money piece, I did three foils. And then I go back in to that right section and continue my diagonal back foils for the rest of the hair that is left. Don't forget, it's very important to leave some hair in between these foils to keep the depth because if not, it will become too blonde on top. I then repeat the same steps on the other side with our diagonal back sections. And now I will go in to double check all my foil placement and make sure everything is tight and secure so no bleeding will occur. So this may look a little crazy, but this is a technique that I found that I really like. She asked if we could brighten up a few pieces on her ends. So we are about to go in now with Redken Flash Lift and 10 volume and freehand paint some balayage pieces. I'm just picking up some random very big pieces and since I'm using tin volume and it's only sitting on there for a very short amount of time and it's open air, it will not have a lot of lift. So this just opens up that cuticle to let the gloss get in there on those ends and make them a little bit brighter. I don't follow an exact pattern when doing this. I just pick up some of the pieces I feel like look a little more brassy. And the only reason I'm using foils here is just to keep it neat and so it does not bleed on the hair underneath. And you may have noticed I do put gloves on for this part because if not, my hands would be hating me tomorrow. <laughs> The pressure is very important here. So at the very top, I use very light pressure and blend upwards. And at the ends, I do fully saturate it. I continue this all around her head. Again, still picking up pieces that look a little bit on the warmer side. My favorite brushes for my balayage and highlighting techniques is from R and they have a very small fine bristle brush that works very well for blending. And once I am finished with this, I let her sit for just a little bit and I continue to check her until I see the desired lift. Once she's done processing, we have headed to the shampoo bowl, and now I am going to separate her hair and apply the shadow root. It may look a little bit messy right now because of all the teasing, but I've actually noticed if I apply the shadow root before brushing out the tease, it gives even more of a diffused effect. Today I'm using Redken's 06N in Shades EQ for her shadow root, and I'm bringing it about an inch to two inches down I then start on our next section, continuing the same process. I do not shadow root all of the highlights around her face to keep the brightness until the very end. I then apply the gloss, which is Redken Shades EQ 09G, 09GI, and a splash of 07NW. After a good trim and style, here is the final result. 
I love this combination because the GI helps cut the yellow, but the G and the NW help keep enough warmth in the hair to give it that beautiful golden blonde tone. My choice of products is Pureology's 21 Leave-In Spray and Amika's Smoothing Balm. And once it is dry, I finish my style using Kenra number 13 and my Hot Tools one and a quarter inch gold barrel curling iron. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.